Watch what happens when you dismiss a simple notification on an iPhone. Three queries. Two of them are blocked. Why is iPhone tracking everything we do on our actual phones? Let's find out. Well, I recently made a video showing you all the hidden websites that an Android phone connects to, and many of you wanted to know if the iPhone does the same thing. So I bought an iPhone. Now, this is a brand new setup of the iPhone. There is nothing installed on it besides whatever comes standard with the phone. So let's get started. Right, brand new setup, no cellular, no SIM cards inserted in here. We're just gonna use the Wi-Fi. So we're going to the Wi-Fi settings and we're gonna change the DNS from the automatic one. Let's get rid of that one. And we're gonna put in our own DNS. 192.168.50.26. And why did I change the DNS? I changed the DNS from the default one so that it would connect to the DNS monitoring system, which is called Pi-hole. Whenever the phone wants to connect to any website, it will ask the Pi-hole for the IP address of that website, much like looking up a friend's number in your contact list. What Pi-hole then does is look up the websites in its own list to see if it is a known website that is used for tracking and for ads. If it is, it's gonna block it. If it's not, it will allow the phone to connect. And that serves the purpose for this test because we wanna see all the websites that the phone is trying to get to. Also, and this is important, I'm only looking for the standard DNS. I am not looking for any other connections from the device. So now, let's enable Wi-Fi and watch what happens. Wi-Fi is now connected and we're watching the total queries on the top and here we can see how many queries are coming in. And look at this, already 115, 120, 126. Remember, this has got nothing on it. The only thing it's got is the default setup and look at how many queries the phone is already making. So let's go and investigate what the phone is actually requesting. We're gonna click on query log and we're gonna click on show all so we can see absolutely everything. And we start scrolling down the list and we can see that it's just the iPhone connected. Nothing else is connected to this DNS. And as we scroll down, we can see some of the items are already in red. That means that the Pi-hole DNS has blocked that connection because it's part of its list. It's identified it to be one of those tracking websites. It could be for ads and it could be for other purposes as well. But look at the sheer volume of connections being made from the phone that's only connected to the Wi-Fi and nothing else. So it's time to start investigating what some of these blocked connections are. And I see something called mask.icloud.com. So let's go do a quick look for that. And we can see that it is associated with Apple's iCloud Private Relay, a service that helps protect users' privacy when browsing the web. Now, internet connections set up through Private Relay uses an anonymous IP address that maps the regions user is in without divulging the user's exact location or identity. So technically, this is a good thing and actually should not be blocked. So just because something is being blocked by Pi-hole doesn't automatically make it a bad thing. And when you do some digging, the consensus seems to be that this should be allowed through as it does protect your information. But what is insane to me is the sheer number of connections that the iPhone makes without any external apps installed. Anything from iTunes to Apple News to iCloud connections are all being sent from the phones in massive bursts. So it's time to take it a step further and install some apps. Okay, to the App Store we go, and I'm only gonna install three applications. I'm gonna install Instagram, and for all the applications, it's exactly the same. Installing the applications, clicking on open, getting to the login page, then closing out of that, getting rid of it so it doesn't run in the background, and then doing the next one. So that's Instagram done, here is TikTok, and then let's do one more, which is Amazon. And then let's go see what that does to our connections. Now, obviously this process was sped up as you know what installing an app looks like, but do take note at the time of the phone so you can see the connections. 
Look at that. Look at those connections climbing. Now, for full transparency, I am speeding this up and I just want to see what the maximum amount is. 355 connections, 56 connections. And if you notice the time on the phone, you'll see that it is the same time that these connections are made. But look at just how many connections have been sent. Uh, 356 connections just by installing the app and not logging in. That's critical to remember. So let's let filter down this list. Let's just type Instagram. I can see graph.instagram.com. Only two connections. Not too bad. Let's see what else we got. Let's change it up to Facebook. Now, even though I didn't install Facebook at all, it was just Instagram. Instagram and Facebook are obviously the same company. And you can see all the connections being made straight to facebook.com. All right, next up, let's look at TikTok and just look at the sheer volume of connections being made to all these various TikTok domains. A lot of them are CDNs, which is basically content delivery network. But what I'm already noticing compared to the Android TikTok connections, which was a sheer volume as well, that this is just much, much more. So I don't know what TikTok is doing on an iPhone compared to an Android but from the number of connections, it seems like it's connecting to many, many more servers than the Android one. All right, let's look at the next one, which was Amazon. So let's dig that up. And again, a whole host of connections and a whole bunch of red connections too. So let's investigate one of them. So this is adsystems.com. And if I look at what is adsystem.com, this is Amazon suite of tools to help sellers promote their products in the Amazon marketplace and if you go to the actual advertising.amazon.com it gives you a whole host of information of how that works but i find this interesting under the frequently asked questions when it says hey what else can you measure look at this you can gain visibility into non-amazon touch points such as search ads social ads display ads video ads as well as email marketing Mm, does that mean that with this ad system, Amazon can actually track your usage on your device, even when it comes to clicking and viewing anything that is not in the Amazon app? Well, it certainly seems to be that way. Okay, so now it's time to actually log into those three apps and see what that does to our connections. Oh, 368 connections, that's a lot. And if we start scrolling through them, What's super interesting to me is that so many of these actually belong to Amazon. And even these weird long domain names and subdomains, a lot of them are just down to Amazon. It's not TikTok, which is what you would expect, not Instagram. What happens when you remove the apps? Does the phone still try to connect to those websites even though the apps are uninstalled? Let's find out. Right, let's get rid of the apps on the phone. So let's remove the app, delete app, and we're gonna make sure that we delete any data that's on the phone as well. Just so we get a nice, clean uninstall. Let's do move Instagram, let's get rid of TikTok, and let's get rid of Amazon as well. Now that we've done that, let's go see what the connections are like. Let's refresh the screen, click on query logs, and there's only 14 connections. And even if you leave it for quite a while, there are no new connections from Amazon, from TikTok, or from Instagram or Facebook. And again, these are only DNS connections. So could these apps be making other connections using other protocols? Absolutely. But as far as those 366 connections are concerned that we saw, these have all disappeared. But there is one thing that is very strange that I didn't see on Android. Right, as you can see, I've cleared the logs. There's absolutely nothing in the Pi Hole system, and my phone is currently not connected to the Wi Fi, therefore, not connected to Pi Hole. Now, watch what happens the second I switch off one of my notifications. Look at that three queries, and all I did was dismiss a notification on the phone and I've got three queries immediately as that happened? Why? So does the phone report back in some sort of way when we dismiss these notifications? It seems that way. And it got even weirder when I noticed that more connections were coming into the system all when I was just doing this. So I noticed as I'm going into the iPhone settings and I'm scrolling around, when I go into one of the menus, some connections actually go from my phone to the Pi Hole server. 
So then I go to another setting and more connections come in. Some things don't trigger connections whilst others do. I'm confused. Why is everything that I'm doing actually is triggering some connections? I'm not making any changes. And even if I was, these are local changes on my device itself. Why should that trigger a connection between the phone and an Apple domain? So what does all this mean? Well, firstly, we need to stop with this whole Android is Google, so we can't trust it, that kind of nonsense. As you can see, we have no idea what Apple is doing either. And that's basically the two options we have unless we're willing to install something like Graphene OS. Secondly, connections are being made constantly if you use the phone or when you don't and it's in standby mode. Connections are encrypted, so we can't really see exactly what is being sent by and large. Thirdly, we have such little knowledge about what else is going on with our phones. These are just DNS connections, as I've mentioned several times. There are plenty of other connections being made. Documentations on the DNS domains that we have seen are very, very limited. I wonder why that is. Personally, my concern is not about being tracked by Big Brother or those three-letter acronym government agencies. They have far superior technology than this. I am much more concerned about app developers that do who knows what and siphon whatever they need from our devices. They can pretty much get away with anything as long as they pass the Play Store detection process. And realistically, that's not that great as we've seen in the news on both Apple and Android. So what can you actually do? Well, Piehole isn't an app, so you cannot set it up on your phone. You can set it up on your home network, and when you're on Wi-Fi, you can use the Piehole system to block all these connections. But obviously, when you're out of Wi-Fi and you're using your mobile data, then it gets super complicated to connect back to your home's Piehole. What I suggest is to install a VPN that has facilities to block trackers and even block ads. I like NordVPN and I have a link in the description and no, this video is not sponsored by them. It's just a system that I personally use and I like it because it works well in limiting tracking. You can also install ad blocker apps, but these are hit and miss at best. Another thing you can do is not install the apps like Amazon or Instagram, but actually go and log into the website instead. Whilst this will limit the connection from your device, you just need to know that there is still tracking going on, but it's done via the web browser. Hopefully that answers the questions that people had on the Android tracking video, which if you haven't seen it, it's right over here. I do also go into a whole bunch of details onto various tracking services. So go check that video out and give the video a quick thumbs up to like it before you head out. And I'll see you in this video. Let's go.